I'd like to take this opportunity to ask a few questions, um, just simple things so that we get a little insight into who you really are and this entire tsunami of change that you have started. Mm -hmm. So a simple question, what made you interested or particularly start funding women and children health? Well, I think whenever you look at global health, you have to look at women and children because if you look at the number of women, as was said earlier by Peter, that are dying in childbirth, those are needless deaths. Or you look at the number of children who are still dying from basic things like immunization. Those are problems that we can tackle. So this first became obvious, I would say to me, when I first came to India over 12 years ago. I was up in a northern state, which was then Uttaranchal. It's now Uttar Pradesh. And I sat down with a group of women you know, in a village in the foothills of the Himalayas. And the first thing this group of women did was roll out a piece of what to me looked like butcher paper. It was a map of their village. And so what was talked about today about mapping, these women had already mapped their village. And they already knew exactly who had how many children, how many had died, and who was using what type of birth control. And the more the women talked, the more you realize that this information was not only empowering for them, it was changing their village. And I have now seen that in Malawi and Tanzania and other states in India. It is true all over the world that information and tools put in the hands of women change lives. But why would you choose health? Why not some educational institutions or any other thing? I mean, you could have chosen to build, you know, anything, any kind of uh, academies, universities, anything. Why health? Why particularly health? Well, I think if you really believe that all lives have equal value, the only way a child gets to the point where the parents can educate that child is if the child has a beginning where they grow up healthy. If they start from a baseline where they're not being nourished, and they start at a lower IQ, or they're, they're faced with malaria season after season, they don't even begin to grow up to be able to go to school to achieve their potential. So you have to start with health is the feeling that Bill and I both have. Well, it's definitely worth it for us in India. Uh, and what about TED Exchange? How did that idea come about? Because it's a completely new vertical in TED, and it's just spreading like wildfire. How did that happen? Well, I think TED Exchange is a, is a fantastic platform. As was said earlier, it's a great way to spread ideas. And I think it's a great way to have a global conversation about what's really happening and where can change happen. And so, much, so many of the talks today were about change that you're seeing at the local community level. And it's that grassroots change that really gets things started. So I love the idea of TED Exchange because it's not just us here in this room having this conversation. It's a global conversation that people will get sparked by these ideas and say, I want to do it in my community because this makes a difference. But definitely an amazing idea and for all of us to be here today. What is it that you have taken away from today's talks, from the people you've heard here with us today? Well, I've taken away that innovation comes in lots of different forms. So whether that, and that you have to listen. To innovate and use any kind of new innovation, whether it's a social innovation, whether it's a technological in innovation, you have to be part of the community and understand what it is that the community faces and how they view the problem. Because as Vishwazit said, they have their own structure. And a lot of it makes a lot of sense. But you, to help them see what's new, and what would change in their culture, you have to listen and, and be part of that. And same thing with a technological change. If you want to bring in a new malarial diagnostic or any do, do, new diagnostic, the community has to accept it. We can make all the great vaccines in the world, and we can spend millions of dollars doing it. But at the end of the day, the mother or father won't accept those drops being put in the mouth of their child or the shot in the arm. All of that science isn't going to make any difference. So we have to really listen and understand how to be part of the community to introduce these innovations that will change and save so lives. So tremendous local knowledge in different countries across the world. And lastly, what is it that you think that all of us can do after this? How can we take this forward? What is it that we can perhaps connect with or in some way be linked to this amazing afternoon? Well, I would say anybody here in India or who's watching that you know, any of the ideas that have stimulated things that you want to work on, that you know could make a change, any idea you've got for change, one of the things Peter talked about is the grand challenges for exploration. There's a website for that. If you've got a social idea that's a change, or an innovative business model, or an innovative scientific solution, go to that website, because we're seeking ideas. But it's not just us. It's any ideas that you've got as well that can create change. I encourage you to talk to others and to get involved. Thank you very much. Thanks, this Rose. is really an honor.